I'm going to take a walk down memory lane and talk to you about a book that I first read 25 years ago. Um, Stephen Covey, Seven Habit of Highly Effective People. Uh, put this on your list if you haven't already read it. This is a book you absolutely want to read. And one of the first things he talks about in here is, how, is a paradigm shift. And you've heard me say before many, many times, perspective is the only thing that can dramatically change the outcome of an event without changing any of the facts. And the key to success so often is nothing more than having the correct perspective around an event. I'll give you one that we were just talking about, COVID. If it wasn't for COVID, survive to thrive wouldn't exist. Pivot shift ahead wouldn't exist. All of these things that you guys are sharing gratitude for came as the result of we needed to find a way to stay plugged in to a community when we went into, um, what's the word? Uh, lockdown. And here we are perspective. Now, a paradigm shift is, is changing the way you look at things. Bold law. What's interesting is when you read this book, you're going to go, oh, that's where Diane got it. Oh, that's where Diane got it. Because so many of the bold laws come from this book. Uh, one of the bold laws is change the way you look at things, things you look at change. And the story that Stephen Covey shares in this book, and you guys know I love stories, so here goes, is there's a man who gets on a subway in New York, early morning, quiet, uh, it's a weekend. It's not crowded. And he has a cup of coffee and a newspaper. Now, you know, it's an old story because if the story was told today, he'd be looking at his, his, uh, his iPad and, and looking at something online. <laughs> but he's, he's reading a newspaper and he has a cup of coffee and he's enjoying the morning quiet. So I want you to go there. Think about the scene that I just painted. Now, Another man gets on the train after a couple stops and he has three or four children with him. And the children are loud, they're running all over the place, they're making a lot of noise. One of them bumps into him, knocks the paper out of his hand, spills his coffee. Can you feel your aggravation level going up? Yes, you can. And it's the purpose of a story. And the gentleman who is with the children, the father looks up and he can see the irritation on this other man's face. And he says, I'm sorry, my children are disrupting you. I apologize. Um, I'm not really with it. Uh, I'm not myself, I didn't notice. You see, we just left the hospital and their mother passed away this morning and I guess they probably don't know how to handle it. And quite honestly, neither do I. Now, are you looking at the story different? That's a paradigm shift. Think about that next time you're driving down the road and somebody comes up speeding behind you, <clears throat> 100 miles an hour, weaving through traffic, driving like a crazy person, and you're thinking, gee whiz, I hope there's a cop up there somewhere. Somebody that'll arrest this idiot who's driving down the road just recklessly. What if they have a sick loved one in the car who needs to get to the hospital? What if they're on the way home trying to get to someone who needs their help? I mean, just what if? You don't know. And if you don't know, be in curiosity, not in judgment. Next time somebody's rude to you in public and they're just being a jerk, who knows what they're going through in their life, right? One of the things that I learned from Bull that I still hang on to, actually, this is not Bull, this is in MAPS training when I was coaching for MAPS, is everybody is doing the best they can at the moment with what they've got. Everybody is doing the best they can at the moment with what they've got, right? If you will adopt that way of thinking, you'll get less frustrated with people. All right, 
So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get into this book and I'm just going to get into the glossary and I'm just going to go table of contents and there's seven habits and I'm going to hit each one of them and just give you my perspective on the seven habits. But please write these seven habits down. Habit number one, be proactive. Now, it's interesting. Back in the 90s, this was a business term that was like the term, be proactive. Today, we're like, yeah, of course, we get it. Be proactive. But in the 90s, I guess it was maybe something new to business, to the business world. What's the opposite of being proactive? It's being reactive. reactive. Right. And being proactive simply means exactly what it says. And that is respond to something before it happens. Take initiative to do something to prevent a negative situation from happening that you're going to have to react to. When you don't do what you're supposed to do, when you're supposed to do it, you're left with a situation where you have, you have no other choice but to be reactive. To be proactive means you're eliminating those situations from happening. Plan ahead, okay. Principle number two, begin with the end in mind. This is one of my favorites. Begin with the end in mind simply means what's your vision? You know, part of beginning with the end in mind is all things are created twice. First, they're created here, and then they're created externally. The exercise that he shares in the book that I love with begin the end with, begin with the end in mind is you're at a funeral. You're walking in and there's people there that are there to share love and to celebrate the life of this person who is in the casket in front of in front of the room and you're hearing all of these people share how wonderful this person is and they're celebrating their life listening to what they're saying paying attention to what they're saying and you and you Recognize the fact that these are people you know. Matter of fact, these are family members and loved ones. You know the people in the room. And as you get closer to the room, you to the front of the room, you realize the person who is in front of the room is you. Now, what are they saying? Beginning with the end in mind is that exercise. What are people saying about you? When your journey on this earth is over. Now, beginning with the end in mind can be a daily event. It could be a weekly event. It could be an annual event. It could be, I'm going on a listing appointment and I'm going to begin with the end in mind. And the end in mind for me is, are you ready to get started? Yes, I am. Cool. Now I'm going to plan the entire listing appointment around beginning with the end in mind. Communication formula, A plus B plus C equals D. A, well, let's begin with the end in mind. D is the result. D is the desired result that you're looking for from this conversation. A is the person that you are speaking to. B is the message. C is the method, as in face-to-face -face conversation, phone call, text message, email, and A plus B plus C equals D. Now, the best form of communication is always what? Face-to-face. -face. -face. The second best form of communication is what? Speaking on the phone. Speaking on the phone. The best form of communication, if you want to screw it up, is to, is to text or email. The only purpose for a text or email is confirming we're meeting at four o'clock, period, the end. Just checking to make sure we're still getting together later today at five. Or Jonathan, looking forward to having lunch with you tomorrow. Does 12 work or would one be better? Those are all good. If you're going to have a conversation with somebody, don't do it by text or email. You'll mess it up. The third principle is put first things first. This is the 80-20 rule, guys. This is where the four quadrants come from that you've seen me use many, many times. Quadrant one, urgent and important. Quadrant two, not urgent and important. Quadrant three, urgent, 
and not important. In quadrant four, not urgent and not important. And first things first, live in quadrant number two, not urgent and important. That's where you want to spend most of your time. This is where the saying comes from, never let the things that matter least get in the way of the things that matter most. What are your first things? You know, Gary Keller wrote a book on this. It's called The One Thing. And the one thing is the 20% of the 20%. In other words, there's five things that make up the 20% for you in real estate. They are lead generation, meeting with buyers and sellers, taking listings, executing contracts, and practicing and role-playing your scripts. Now, if you asked, what's the 20% of the 20%? 20% of five is what? It's one, it's one thing. What's the one thing that will get me closer to my goal every single day? What's the one thing that I have to complete before I do anything else? Lead generation. There it is. It's what is work. Work is 20 conversations, not 19, not 18, not 17. It's care calls, not sales calls. It's lead with gratitude, bring value to the conversation, build relationships. This is lead generation. The next principle is think win-win. Now, the opposite of win-win is win-lose, lose-win, or lose-lose. <laughs> And think win-win means I have to win and you have to win. Now, it's either win-win or it's no deal. It cannot be win-lose. It cannot be lose-win. I'm not willing to lose so that you can win. And I'm not willing for you to lose so I can win. It has to be win-win. What would your life look like if you had win-win conversations with everybody in your life? What would your business look like if you ran it according to win-win or no deal? Now, there's so many people in business who are perfectly okay with lose-win or win-lose. In other words, I'm perfectly fine if you lose as long as I win. You, you know who they are. No, don't put their name in the chat. Not a good idea. <laughs> All right. The next principle is seek first to understand, then to be understood. Boy, this one took me a while. And this one's tough. Imagine you're in a, in a conversation with a loved one, your spouse. It's an argument. And... What do most people do when they're having a conversation with someone else on a topic that they disagree on? It's a competition to see who can talk over the other person as they're trying to prove their points. Now, what if the conversation started with Clarissa? Let's talk about this. You go first. I want to make sure I understand exactly how you feel first. And I go three deep. Tell me more. How did that make you feel? Why do you feel that way? And I just keep digging until I clearly understand everything that Clarissa has to say. And then, Clarissa, do I have it? Do I understand where you're coming from? Yes? Cool. Can I share with you my perspective? How's that conversation go compared to two people who are trying to talk over one another, competing against one another, trying to prove their point. Next time you're in a contract negotiation, yeah, next time you're in a contract negotiation or you're dealing with a real estate agent and your mind is telling you this person's nuts, they don't know what they're doing, they're unrealistic, breathe. Seek first to understand, try, let me understand where you're coming from first. Tell me, tell me why you feel that way. Why does the buyer feel that way? Why does the seller feel that way? Why is that important? Dig deep, clearly understand where they're coming from and then check, do I understand? Do I have everything? Do I understand where you're coming from? Yes, cool. Now, can I share with you my perspective? 
Just try that out. See if you have better conversations. All right. The next principle is synergize. Synergize is one plus one does not equal two. One plus one equals three. Synergize is the difference between being independent and interdependent. Keller Williams was created on this concept. The idea at Keller Williams was that we were not a dependent model. We're not an independent model. We are an interdependent model. And that means that we are partners. That's why we refer to you as agent partners or as associates, because we are in business together. I'm not hiring real estate agents. I'm asking real estate agents to hire me, to give me the opportunity to support them and their goals. It's a partnership. It's synergy. And synergy always wins because one plus one equals three, not one plus one equals two. The last principle is sharpen the saw. And Stephen Covey uses another story to explain this. You're traveling down the street and you come across a guy who's cutting down a tree and he is just working and sawing at this tree, sweats, pouring, and he's working and working and working. And you say, what are you doing? Now, Aaron, you, you and me, we have a one thing we have in common is we, we both got the smart ass gene. So, you know, you, your response would be the same as my response, which would be, dude, I'm cutting down a tree. What does it look like I'm doing? Right. Yeah. That would be your response. I get it. So that that's the guy's response. He says, I'm cutting down this tree. What do you think I'm doing? And the other guy says, well, you're sure working really hard. And the guy's like, yeah, I know. I know I am working hard. And I'm just not getting to where I'm working and I'm working and I'm working and I'm not getting anywhere. And the other guy says, why don't you sharpen the saw? I'm too busy to sharpen the saw. I don't have time to stop and sharpen the saw. Hmm. Have you ever been late to an appointment and you were running out of gas and you didn't have time to stop and get gas? <laughs> Say yes. yes. <laughs> now, the point, yeah, so many times. The point that Stephen Covey is making is not about getting gas. Here's the point the point is who do you think the saw is in this principle, in this? story. Not who, it's not a what, it's a who. Who do you think the Saul is? Yourself. You are. You're the Saul. Now, sharpen the Saul means take time off to recharge and regroup so that you show up better, so that you're not burnt out. Never truly off, never truly on. When you take time off, the only job you have is to focus on you and your family. You will show up better because you took time off to sharpen the saw. It's time blocking exercise. It's time blocking time to meditate. It's time blocking time to think to walk, to go for a walk on the beach, to sit down with your journal and just to write down what you're thinking about. It's sharpening the saw. What am I gonna do today? As soon as this call is over, I'm done and I'm out. And when I'm out, that means it's Keller Who time. And the only thing that matters to me <laughs> as of 10 a.m. this morning is going for a walk, writing in the journal, sitting in my backyard by the pool, watching football, spending time with Monica, spending time with Lacey, and unplugging mentally from my team leader role. That hat goes on the shelf. And Monday morning, I'll come into work sharp, ready to go, ready to crush 2022 because I took time 
to sharpen the saw. All right. I hope you guys got value from that. That was my New Year's gift to you. Uh, I hope you got value. Um, all I did was just go to the contents and highlighted seven habits of highly effective people. Now, this is not a pass from reading the book because I promise you, Stephen Covey is smarter than I am. You want to hear what he has to say, not just my interpretation of the book. All right, give me some ahas and we'll check out. There you go. Love it, Shirley. Actually got it for Christmas. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brilliant, man. Absolutely brilliant, man. John. Yes, ma'am. Um, what I really love about Stephen Covey too, because I've read the book, I've actually done the workshop and I actually we actually taught the workshop to young people, which is amazing, is that it's so simple to follow. It's like basic foundational uh, guidelines to life. It's not even about business, it's to life. And because, you know, people tend to... Um, really sweat the small stuff, which is one of, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. And, um, and like you realize how lucky we are to even have had the opportunity to go to real estate school, get a license, then to be a part of this community and to get all this information, teaching, um, training, resources at no cost, to, like, like just, dumb it down a little I don't want to say that water it down a little bit to the foundation to the seeds and that's what Stephen Covey is teaching so good stuff I agree thank you uh, Michael Topo puts in the chat uh, <laughs> where's Michael I got to get his picture in front of me huh. uh, what if they are on sample and enjoying a ride with a friend Michael you're a bad boy <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a reference to driving down the road, guys, at 100 miles an hour, by the way. Uh, yeah, Michael. Uh, hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, all I can say, guys, if Michael invites you to lunch, offer to drive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I've got a couple of thoughts, John. Yeah, talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily about driving on sample. Um, I, I think there's so much um, cohesiveness between Stephen Covey and Andy Andrews, mm. right? Um, yeah. You know, being being proactive for me is just you know one of those seven decisions of just taking action, right? Like, mm. yeah. you know, you you can choose not to do something, yeah. or you can be the person that actually does something. Yeah. Um, I, I think about put things first and, um, you know, not all things are created equal, no. right? Being busy just to be busy, mm. um, right? What is, what is the, the bold law on busy, right? Um, where it comes to being busy. Don't, don't confuse movement with achievement. That's right. Yep. Um, so those were, were some of the things that definitely stuck in mind. Um, but the be proactive for as simple as it is, right? Like it's best to make, to take action versus not to take action. Yeah. Right. So that's kind of my thought. Good stuff. Thank you, Michael. It's great to see you here too, by the way. Uh, Vicki and Carolyn, your hands are up. I don't know if that's from earlier and you didn't put them down or maybe you put them back up. No, I put it back up. Okay. Talk to me. <laughs> so, you know, this is, these are so amazing and it's so important because these habits everybody has bad habits or good habits and you need to be mindful of these habits and how they can shape our relationships whether personal or business but we have to just really be mindful of how that is going to shape our, our goals and, and going forward. And I really appreciate you sharing this with us. It's, it's amazing. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. And you know, the word habit 
can get lost in the conversation. And what I'm hearing when I hear the word habit is everybody can do this. We all have habits, whether they're good habits or bad habits. And it's just a choice to create a habit. Uh, the definition of a habit is do it until when you don't do it, it feels weird because you didn't do it. Carolyn. Okay, maybe Carolyn's hand is still up from earlier. Okay, Carolyn, if you're there and you can hear me, uh, take yourself off mute and talk to me. Other than that, I don't have any more hands up. So that's going to be a wrap for 2022, 2021. What year are we in? 21. 21. <laughs> You're already in <laughs> See what happens when you get old, Aaron? They just, it really doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> I just love it. All right, guys, I appreciate you. I really do. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life for the last 365 days. Uh, thank you for joining me every morning as we come together to share, uh, to learn, and to grow. Uh, I promise you that I got more out of this than you did. I promise you. You know, I'll close with another story, which is what's interesting is speaking of getting more out of this than you did is Lacey doesn't attend any of these, right? But Lacey lives with me. She has for 20 years. And for a year when we were quarantined, she was listening to these Survive to Thrive calls every morning because she didn't have a choice. And I'm reading a text message that she sent me yesterday that she received from a coworker. She's 20 years old, and she was just promoted to shift manager for Starbucks, which is a pretty big deal, right? And uh, she gets a message, I won't read the entire thing, but she gets a message from one of her coworkers who says, um, I know it's been hectic your last few shifts as the lead, but I just wanted to say, I think you're doing great. You know, since I've been with Starbucks forever, all in capitals, whoever this is, has been there a long time. I've seen a lot of people try to grow from the barista to shift manager, and they just don't have it. You do, and then some. The fact that you want to take people out of their comfort zone, try and change the game up a bit. The fact that you stick up for people and are just naturally good at delegating, you have it, kid. Now, I'm a proud pop, right? But that's pretty cool, isn't it? It's amazing. Right? Congratulations, Dad. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> my problem, my life. <laughs> uh, Aaron, Aaron says it's all Monica. <laughs> So, as an educator for so many years, I always used to say, especially with kids, you know, when you look at kids, when the parents come in, you can always say, you look at them and say, oh, that explains it all. <laughs> I always said, the fruit, the apple never, ever fell off. It's still dangling from the tree. <laughs> That's <laughs> <laughs> all right i can't think of a better way to end than that guys i love you thank you for being a part of my uh life for the last 365 days happy new year see everybody monday morning happy new year thank you john happy new year happy everyone. New year, everyone thank you everybody happy new year happy new year